Now go ahead, call you through to the police emergency. What's the emergency? What's the address of the emergency? The girlfriend has a baby. Four to two, what address? Maybe the baby's come out. Go ahead, call what's your emergency, please? There's one phone number everyone knows. Police emergency, how can I help? What's the emergency, please? And last year, it was dialed 31 million times. Just prepare yourself for what could be one of the most traumatic things you're going to hear or one of the most comedy moments that you're going to sit through. Suze, vibrator stuck in anus. These are the people who tune in first to our cries for help. Right, listen, you need to come. Listen, listen to me. They said, you need to listen to me so we can help her. Making decisions that can mean the difference between life and death. We're going to pump the chest hard and fast. One, two, three, four. I just go over the call and think, have I done everything that I could have done? Jesus Christ, I think she died. We follow the calls as they are passed to police, fire and ambulance. <laughs> Seeing through their eyes how Britain is changing. Get back, get back. Calm down. Have you taken any drugs at all? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Yeah, it's definitely the Wild West, all right, yeah. <laughs> I get to see the side of Britain that no one ever thinks about. Well, I'm looking for a guy with a sofa. You've not seen one, have you? I've learnt a lot about what goes on in real life, to be honest. I swear. Get the Relationships are supposed to provide happiness and security. We just bounce off each other, we always have. A little bit like sumo wrestlers. Yeah. <laughs> but when things spiral out of control... You're on bail! You're on bail for hitting Jen. the girl already! More of us resort to dialing 999. Um, I've got a bit of a problem. She's keeping my kitten, and she won't let me on his back. The emergency services are left to pick up the pieces. Okay. Protecting us from those we once loved. We'll get in the van now. They've not invited us to their wedding, but they'll invite us to their arguments. Ambulance, you tell me exactly what's happened. Your mum's boyfriend has watched a mobile phone right inside her backside. So, I, I, just, just clarify for me, have you, you have actually tried to get it out of you, the mobile phone? I've attempted to, yeah. I didn't want to attempt to, yeah. but I've attempted it on twice now. And it is. Try and get stuck. a mobile phone up, and it's completely stuck. I cannot get it out. Oh, okay. The private lives of Blackpool residents are an open book to the operators at the emergency control centres. Ambulance service, what's the address of the emergency? There was a guy wanted to um, celebrate Valentine's Day with his missus and put a rose um, down his penis and thought it was a lovely celebration of Valentine's Day. At the police control centre, they don't just hear about Blackpool's goings-on, they get to see them too, relayed through hundreds of CCTV cameras positioned around the town centre. Oh, dear. <laughs> what were they doing then? His hand's going ten to the dozen. Her hand's going ten to the dozen. <laughs> All systems game. <laughs> 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 I'll leave okay. with you. <laughs> and just before the peak, <laughs> CCTV bing bonged them. <laughs> Get yourselves off there now. <laughs> <laughs> Pass as Maluka said, please. My little swamp oh, duck. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Pass as mine as well, you little mud flake. <laughs> <laughs> Very fortunate because the love of my life, I work with him. Paul, side by side. So 24 7 we're together. Some people will probably go, oh my God, how do you do that? But it works for us. 
We just bounce off each other, we always have. Mm. A bit like Seymour wrestlers. Yeah. <laughs> with working with Mandy for, for so many years, she, I mean, she was my best friend. It just seemed like the natural step to ask her to be my girlfriend. She's got all the same interests and all the same likes. Yeah, that's quite boring. Yeah, it's um, quite boring. <laughs> We're clear. Whoa, 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 whoa. Excuse me. <laughs> After this one. <laughs> there are points in this job when you look at each other and you think, what are we doing? I wonder who else is doing this. Is this what you call a good relationship? <laughs> in the middle of the night, running around? I'm going to go just to watch the chair. The guy collapsed on the road, he don't even been knocked down or he's drunk or drunk up, but he's on the floor. He's, he's, he's completely wasted. Just for a knock. All right. <laughs> Both police and ambulance crews have been sent to the scene, but the potential patient has disappeared into the dunes. As soon as we mention police, he went, up, he went a bit mental and he ran off. OK. A midnight chase becomes Paul and Mandy's Saturday night out. What did he have on? Easy to spot Easy in the pitch Easy to spot him then. <laughs> tell you what, he's like that. I suppose it could be quite romantic, couldn't it? Windswept beach together, and then you suddenly look at the whole picture and <laughs> you see a crazy man leaping around. Police, stay where you are. Stay where you are then. For everybody, it's strange. For us, it's the most natural thing in the world, and we love it. Oh, we found him. When we got back, your cocaine's gone. Your cocaine's gone. Fuck off. I'm not committing a crime. You have. Telling me to fuck off and trying to hit me is a crime. I didn't try to hit you. I tried to escape. <laughs> ah, you really ah, wait, wait, don't pull my ass. Don't pull my arm until I got up, you fucking idiot. What? What are you doing? I told you. Ah! All the coke's gone! Oh, I'll get in the van myself! That was different. I just needed that run then. <laughs> yeah, thanks for all leaving me without any light. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, darling. No, it's fine. Well, it gets on my nerves. Of course he does. <laughs> Sometimes we're like Jack and Vera and we bicker. Um, but which couples don't? Yeah. Now, is that coming towards us? I'll do a U-turn. It's kicking off in St Elms now. Oh, is it? PC Claire Van Der's Goss starts a Saturday night shift. These are normally dominated by bust ups between couples, friends, and families. If there's a domestic situation, don't ask me why. We just all fall into brackets, and that is my bracket. I'm everybody's social worker. You know, they just start 999 to get me, that's all. She don't know. I wasn't thinking of that when she was fucking punching me in the face, right? Right, there's no need to fire, okay? What the fuck are you wearing? Every single shift I'll go to a domestic. Every single shift. Honestly, honestly, they're all weird. You won't believe these jobs that we go to. They're all really, really strange. An argument between a young couple and a friend who's been staying at their flat has erupted into violence. You go over there. Go over there. The police, you all right? What's your name? you with one of these guys in here, are you? No, you have no I'm No, no, no. I, 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 I'm trying to talk to her. Yes, I know she is. Get back in there. I'll speak to you in a minute. Yeah, we go to jobs that I would class as being childish, where basically you go in, say, you know, stop having like children, get it sorted, give it him back, give it her back. Well, Can you go back you inside? I'm going to come that. and sort it out in a minute with you. Get inside. It's not even a crime most of the time. It's just somebody 
who needs help facilitating their life. Are you going to give me a statement for an assault? You know, to make a complaint of assault against you? I just want to remove from the class. That's fine. That's that's happened yeah. anyway. I've done yeah, that. You just do what you have to, but I just want to remove from right. the class. Hi, right, OK, then. I think your fella needs some uh, loving next door. That flat needs uh, a bit of Kim and Aggie time, doesn't it? Or, uh, OK. We enter their life for a short spell. Pretty much iron it out as best we can, get them in contact with the right people, then out we walk again. I spend more time with my shift than I do my husband, definitely. But the only time I see my husband is after I've done an eight-hour Aslan shift in the town centre on foot in the middle of winter and my bum cheeks are freezing and I'll get in <coughs> and, I'll, and I'll see, uh, you know, how long it takes him to realise I've pressed him up against his back and woken him up when he's on an early shift. Um, I've got a bit of a problem. She's keeping my kitten and she won't let me on his back. So I was wondering what I can do about it. What do you mean she's keeping your kit in? Well, she's keeping me out of her house. You do get a lot of people ringing in. General fallouts, squabbles. A lot of the time, it's people falling out over what they're watching on telly. <laughs> Xbox Right, let me just start. Right, this isn't an emergency. Dan just found the national number. And they're not giving us back. Right, getting your call of duty back is not an emergency, OK? Please, we can sort anything out in people's eyes. We're here to pick up the pieces, get it done. You will sort it for us. Some of the phone calls are ridiculous. Police emergency, go ahead. My partner, who's got all my clothes, all my stuff, my charger, everything up there. I, it's just, I could pick it up Sunday, but I don't want it Sunday. I need it now. People shag a lot after dark in Blackpool down alleys. There's, uh, there's, there's fluids knocking about all over that town centre at night time. Yesterday we had uh, a guy um, pleasuring himself on his driver's seat into a Tesco carrier bag. The holiday spirit means Blackpool is a magnet for people in search of one night stands. PC Jamie Robinson's beat is late night Queen Street, heart of the party district. It can be a tough place to be a female cop. You want to walk about? No, I'm not, mate. No. I'll get you a drink. I'm all right, thanks. What's your favourite drink? My favourite drink, Amaretto and Coke. Sorry, Amaretto and Coke? I'm all right, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm not in fancy dress and we're not allowed to drink. So I'm Are you actually working? I'm actually working. Okay, sorry. I thought it was in, like, please fancy no. dress. No. Do you, Josh? They'll ask you if you take your baton home, they'll ask you if you take your handcuffs home. And it can be quite difficult sometimes if you're trying to tell someone off and they're just laughing in your face because it actually turns them on a bit. It's not, not the reason why I joined. The police right here are beautiful and lovely. Uh, very generous and lovely women. Uh, police. And men. men. Just women here. And men. Police and men. Black women and police and men. Please. Men seems to see the authority as like some sort of sexual thing, and a lot of police women do have difficulties in gaining authority over men because they just see it as a big joke. If you want to handcuff them, they already have their hands out wanting to be handcuffed. Yeah, you get chatted up quite a lot when you go when you go to jobs. You know, they're not made of wood, are they? He's <laughs> gonna be issued a section 27 notice and you're gonna leave the town centre now. You're not gonna return for the next 24 hours. If you do so, you'll be arrested. Do you understand? Yep. A little bit of a kiss. Do me a favour, don't speak to me like that. Have a bit of respect or you'll end up getting yourself locked up. You can't get a big head about it. It's all about the uniform. Everyone fancies a bit of uniform, don't they? Relationship disputes account for a growing number of 999 calls, and they're never easy to resolve. Right, this guy thinks she's clever. 
A woman has dialed 999, claiming her ex-boyfriend is harassing her. Right, there's just uh, an allegation at the moment that you've uh, smashed a window. All right, all right. Now then, if you, before you get in, have you got anything in your pockets you shouldn't have? No. Right, what's this? What is it? It's what a glass strawberry. I always carry mine with me. Do you carry your glass strawberry with you? to do for my girlfriend. girlfriend. Come on, in you go. In you go now. I'm not get it, resisting. We'll get in the van. Get in now. Sit down. <laughs> I'm not resisting. Brilliant. Most of the time it's like Groundhog Day. I'll come on duty and the same job will come up that you dealt with at court. You went all the way to court. I'm an ex soldier, mate. Right? 2506 Right, one say. And you'll get called again, and again she'll say, yeah, that's it, it's over. You know, but every single time you can't walk in and go, well, you know, we've been here, haven't we? See you later, and walk out. OK, this chap's been arrested for criminal damage and assault. Um, criminal damage and assault? Oh, well, I've been. That's exactly what you've been arrested no, I'm for. Not. Right, no, fair I'm enough. Not. Okay. No, I'm not. This is my turn. In a minute, I'm you're going to get yours. No, I'm not. Stephen. No, I've not been Calm arrested. Down. Oh, Stephen. fuck off. No, Calm I'm not. Down. This gentleman has been. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll yeah, shut my mouth now. I'm an ex soldier. What have you done for your country? Stephen, Fuck off. Stephen, just... What have you done? I'm sorry. Stephen, just chill out. Right, I will down. shut my mouth. Just calm down. This uh, oh, gentleman has been at his ex partner's Man, house. Fucking he's spat at her. He's been trying to get in. She's refused care. to get like, gain entry and then he smashed a window. Deviant assault. Deviant assault and he smashed a window, yes. So I've, I've uh, found him round the corner walking away from the scene. <laughs> Inform domestic in progress. It's another non complicated night for us here. What's um, happened inside here? If she's taken Nova's out, I need to sort this out. When Paul and Mandy arrive at the house, they find a marital dispute where the wife has taken the husband's antidepressants. <laughs> Sorry about the dog. No, it's all right. It's alone. I just want a fucking fag. Yeah, it's your fault and it's his fault. But no, fucking coming home. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. No. No. All we're here to do, Chuck, is to make sure you're all right. I'm fine. You That's shouldn't be such a fucking shit husband. It's your fault. How are you, Chuck? Seven. Seriously? You've been a prat. Seriously, yes, How many are you supposed to take? None. Well, there you go. It's, it's natural for us. It's just our life. It's just, it was our life before we got together. And now that we are together, I mean, I can wipe the blood off her face, she can wipe the snot off mine, and it's just, it's just something we just get on with. It's a bit frightening, really, isn't it? If that's what marriage does for you, a bit worrying. Paul's asked me loads of times to marry him. Um, and I keep saying no. It was getting to the stage where it was probably at least three times a day just to annoy her, because I know it annoys her. Well, every marriage is like that. I'll be reduced to Lambrini and <laughs> White Lightning. <laughs> <laughs> Show to how much I despise and hate you. Yeah. I'm really, really not sure what difference that ring's going to make. My fat medic wedding. <laughs> Do you think I'd get him married? It's in dysfunctional relationships all, all, all day long, every day. Um, makes me determined not to have one. Definitely. You know, makes me determined that my children will not see any arguing or anything like that. PC Claire Van Der's Goss has been married to another Blackpool copper for six years. Romance in our house um, is slightly different to most people. Um, last Valentine's Day, he bought me a new handcuff key. I think you've just got to appreciate who it is you're with and the time that you spend with them. It's not hard to be a good wife. I know what I'm doing.
Right, okay, you're under arrest for an, assault, for an assault, okay. For assault? Yeah, for assaulting this lady. Assault. So you don't have to say anything, we may assault. harm your defence. Don't mention when questioned something assault. which later on in court. Anything do say may be given in evidence, you understand? Yeah. Okay. I don't have to put Jeremy Kyle on the telly at home. In fact, it's banned from my house because it's like being at work. In, f in fact, I often say to people, you know, you look like you could be on Jeremy Kyle. It's ridiculous. But then they don't take it as an insult. I'd take that as an insult if somebody said that to me. Yo, baby. I love you. I love you too, man. Chill out, man. Right, OK, tell me, tell me exactly what's he's happened. He's been sacked twice, he's fucking right. All right, OK, I'm going to take a few details, but we're not delaying the help, OK? Oh, my God, he's going All right, right, just listen to me so we can get some help for him, OK? We're not delaying the help, but... PC Jamie Robinson is dispatched to the house where the man has been stabbed. Around the area of Queen's Park, which is a, a renowned... Um, area of Blackpool, it, it can be quite a troublesome area. Right, I understand, right, just listen to me so we can help him. Listen, just listen to me so we can help him. It's right. not a big fucking hole in his stomach. Right, is the attacker still there? If it's a real adrenaline pumper and you know that it's really kicking off, there's fighting, uh, there's weapons, then it does, your whole body starts to tingle a little bit. You're dead! Hello, can you just listen to me a moment? You're dead! You're not dead, I mean you're a dead man! Right, he's yelling at someone, so I think the attacker is still there. Is the attacker still there? The attacker's just fucking got off now. He's gone. What, the attacker's gone. When I arrived on scene, there was a male sat on the sofa that had been stabbed, holding his stomach. There was his brother there going absolutely crazy. Listen, I want to get you listen, my brother to an hospital now. Listen, right? Get my brother to we need to sort now. it out. Right, you better calm down, mate, otherwise you're going to get parved as well, right? We will sort it out, we need the ambulance, don't we? Right, the ambulance are coming and we will sort it out. There's a lot of blood everywhere, and when I've gone over to have a look at the wound, his intestines and his guts appear to be almost hanging out. I'd probably say it was about the same size as my hand, and I know that because when I put pressure on the wound, my hand actually kind of went sucked into his stomach, which was a... Rather gross. The victim has been stabbed in the stomach with a broken bottle. The wound may require emergency surgery. Oh, well, what's it, my girlfriend? Uh, Jack, yeah, she arrived, Jack. I'll let you know. Come Do you have any allergies or anything like that? Oh, wait. What, what's that? I just felt something. Is that blood? She's here. The victim's pregnant girlfriend, Faye, Arrives in A and E. Fucking see the bastard. What I done to me? A night out with friends unraveled into a drunken fight, which left 19-year-old Jack Tyndall with stab wounds to his stomach. Well, that's horrible, that, isn't it? Oh, it is. Is that fat, that yellow stuff? Oh, I think we'll have to have a proper look at this in theatre for you. When he goes out and has too many drinks, he thinks he's king of the world, and then obviously gets himself like that. I didn't have a good life at all. I had a shit one. But I've met this girlfriend who I'm going out with now. She's made me happy. If it wasn't for her, I'd probably back, be back in, in jail. She's got a nice family. I get along with them. Basically, if it wasn't for my bird now, I'd be fucked. Jack and Faye's baby is due in five months' time. It is scary. It's scarier now as well, obviously, because it's like, what, what happens if he dies? What am I supposed to tell the baby when it's old enough to ask questions? 
truth for yourself back just for a minute. Come on. Well, I've helped you before, I've stitched you up before, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know you have, but I need, I need to. I'm not waiting, you know what I'm saying? It's a mistake. Me, idiot. Just wait. Okay. I'm alright. Just wait. Yeah, you look alright, don't you? I suppose to him it's just a war wound, it's just something to show off to his mate. So, look, this is what happened to me. You should have seen the other guy. That child potentially could have ended up without a dad that night. Now I've got a fresh start, you know. Something to look forward to in the future, you know what I mean? Like, I'm never going to be like the person I used to be, not a chance. I'm going to be more grown up and just starting like a proper family, you know what I mean? Well, is this it, man? Not a bad boy. Just a tear. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic arguments which escalate into violence are on the increase, and it's the staff at the emergency control centres who hear from the victims first. Hello. Sometimes you get a call and you sense that something's not right, I don't know what it is, call it intuition. They've not necessarily said anything that, that, that takes you on that trail of, of an assault, but you just know. I don't know what it is. Hello? Are you OK? Last year, reports of domestic violence rose by 35%. Hello, is the police? Are you OK? No, I'm not. My boyfriend's hit me. He's hit you. OK. Is he still there? Yeah, he's still there. He won't leave. I don't know. He's just leaving. He's just leaving. All right, OK. Don't, just stay on the phone to me, OK? Don't go anywhere. I'm pregnant and he's shouting at me. I've been on the phone when I've, I've heard a woman being severely punched severely assaulted, he was punching her while she was on the phone to me. So, I've just felt helpless. Hello? <laughs> Hello? This person's on the phone to you and this person's chasing after them and all I can say is like, get somewhere safe, you know, get in the bathroom, lock yourself in the bathroom, we've got the police coming, you know, everyone's coming to you as quick as we can but they're terrified on the phone to you. It's just horrible. My partner's um, had a few to drink and he's sort of lost it. And, um, I'm really scared. Have, you, have you been injured at all? Yeah. Do you need an ambulance, love? Yeah. What's your name? What's your name? You use my phone. Hello? Hello? Yeah, it's not nice, what goes on behind closed doors. Most of the murders that we go to are domestic-related. It's kind of the, um, the old cliché, if I can't have you, nobody else can. When they've said, right, that's it, we're splitting up and then she'll get a new partner and he's jealous about that. I, I went to one, actually, um, the husband and wife had split up and then the, the ex-partner was so enraged about it that he'd broken into their house, gone upstairs, and he'd stabbed them in bed and killed them. So they had children. So not only were their children motherless, because he'd just murdered their mother, but of course he's going to spend all his life in prison. So now they're without uh, a father as well. PC Claire Van Der's Goss is responding to a woman who's reported being assaulted by her partner last night. It's wrong of me if I go into a job to say to them, look, this is my life and this is how I live and this is how me and my husband rock along, because that's not everybody's cup of tea. Hello? But I can say to them what is not normal and what they shouldn't be accepting from people. And they know that they shouldn't be accepting it, but sometimes it's just nice to hear that from somebody who can help them, I think. So his goofy teeth, a beard, yeah. scruffy long hair, yeah. He's Bonnie, isn't he? Gorgeous. All right. This isn't a match made in heaven, is it? No. <laughs> OK. Um, 
Now then, have you been asked these 27 questions before? Yeah. You have? There's 27 questions that we ask these people after, which are a good 27 questions. They're trigger questions into how their life is probably going to end up if they don't do something about it. And they've all derived from, unfortunately, ladies that have ended up having funerals. Yeah. OK. Because it's quite it's very serious, isn't it? Yeah. Anybody gets you up yeah, and... I know what you mean. Yeah, OK. If me and my husband start a little titter, one of us will turn around and say, 27 questions. Does he, is he, does he try and control you at all? Tries. He does try? Yeah. Now, when you say he tried to strangle you, yeah. just tell me about what his hands were doing. He was just, like, gripping me like that, do you know what I mean, and pinning me down. He wasn't squeezing or... Was it one hand or two he had one. around your throat? And what was he saying while he's got his hand around your throat? I love you, you've hurt me and all this stuff. I love you, and yet he's put his hand yeah. around your throat. But he's been done for uh, domestic violence in the past with his ex-partner. With previous partners? Yeah. How long have you been with him for? Um, on and off since July. Only since July? Yeah. But what makes it worse is because I'm pregnant as well. How far pregnant are you? About five weeks. Right, so you're about there then, really, yeah. aren't you? You're fully baked? Yeah. Right, OK. So, the burning question is, for me, so that, well, I, I'll obviously be arresting him anyway, from what you've just told me. But will you be willing to provide me with a statement? No, I don't want that to happen to him. Now, if he's never touched you violently previously, and yet he has done when you're 35 weeks pregnant, is there not alarm bells ringing yeah. there for you? Yeah, there is, yeah. Because there's massive ones there ringing for yeah, me. there is. And for anybody not. else that's yeah, going to listen to this. I that, but, I mean, and I think it should be nice and not arrest him. They should be nice and not arrest him. OK, then. I understand it. I understand why these ladies are together with this partner that's doing that to them. It's not right, though. If you're saying no, then that's fine. But it would be really helpful for a court to prosecute him for doing it, if you did. But I don't want him prosecuted. Right, OK. I don't want to let him arrested. I don't want that to happen to him. Just a warning. It's hard knowing what to say, cos everybody's different. I can just tell people, you know, that they don't have to sit there and, and take the abuse off the person that that they're spending their life with. You get one life, it's not rehearsal, is it? We're not, we're not coming back. OK. Right, I'll leave you my card before I go. I'm Liz Eddy. I am Liz Eddy, police at Blackpool. We've had a 999 call from a lady who's uh, crying on the phone to us. Her ex-boyfriend has headbutted her, knocked her teeth out and broken her nose. The troll has just landed on the scene asking for an ambulance. <laughs> A woman has reported a serious assault, and Daniel Farnworth and Joe Edmondson raced to the scene. Yes, it's really, really quiet. Oh, there's loads of screaming and shouting. It's quite bizarre. You get quite, quite scary. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Nothing. When they arrive, the woman is at home with her young son. She says her ex-partner reacted badly to a Facebook post about her plans to go out on the town. It's an obvious there. Ouch. There. Mm. It just hurt me, and it just, I just felt a pain, and then I felt my tongue. It already got broken, because my, my ex-ex knocked it out anyway, so... Right. Can I'm you open and close your mouth fully? Why did you can? Big R, lovely. No pain around here. Yeah, you know me fitting well. Yeah, I know. I'm just getting knocked the bugger out. Oh, well, mate, she's done that anyway, so it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you've had a, a smack to the face. All right, you've you've broken your nose. That's I? more than likely a 99.9%. Oh, yeah. I was crying. I was really, really upset. You've and I'm right deeply thing. hurt. And yeah. I'm probably going to cry about this for days okay. because I don't see why hey, someone can... If they love someone so much... Why would you do that to somebody? Okay, so Why would you continuously right, so you try and strangle them and hurt them and yeah. strangle me until I can't breathe? I think That's something you, needs to be done it? for him to realise that he can't go around doing that and thinking everything's OK, because the majority... I was with him for a year and a half, and the majority of the time I got hurt and he thought he could get away with it, he's like, oh, it's all right, shouldn't be there. 
she did, she did that. She fought with it. It's all right. I just tangle every day. And I even messaged him saying, listen, there's only so much people can put up with until they turn around and say, you're not worth it. And I've said that to him. No matter whether you love him or not, you just, you can't put up with it and you can't, you can't do it no more. But we need all what I need to do. Oh. It's nothing out of the ordinary for getting knocked about a bit, anyway. No, it's not acceptable. Every guy does it. I bet every female in the same... Every female turns around and goes, yeah, I got knocked out. Or I got hit. And no guy treats me right. The little boy was unaware, really, that we were there as such. Asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up, just to make conversation with him, and he replied that he wanted to be a policeman when he grew up in order to protect his mum. The policeman. He loves his leg. He wants to be a policeman and catch the bad guy. I'll put him in jail. Oh, he's got the police on his side. Yeah, he's got the police on his side. Right, I'll see you up there. Okay, thank you. Cheers, right, guys. All right, see you later. Mind your step. the ones that it's happened to before because they're not worried about if the nose is broken or what the face looks like whereas the ones that maybe it's happened for the first time they're really upset really distraught and wanting a mirror to look in to look at their injuries whereas this lady just wasn't bothered you know it's happened before it'll happen again kind of thing and that was her attitude unfortunately where's number seven can you, can you look for the number then look, look the doors which is number seven that. Oh, that must be the one you're going in then. Should we go in this one? It's like, like she said, it's just life. It's normal and it's it's wrong. It's sad. It's it's awful. I can sick in a relationship like that. Well, I suppose if you're in that position. It's a bit of a different story, isn't it? You sort of might think, oh, well, I've done that to upset him today, and that's what's triggered it. So that's how you start blaming yourself, isn't it? It's tricky, isn't it? But it's, when children are involved, it's upsetting, really. You, know, you just want to take them home, don't you? And I don't know. He was a right cute little thing, I just thing, looked at him and I thought, such a shame. Fortunately, when, the majority of the time when we get there, the men have been removed by the police. And when they are there, if they're still on scene and the police are dealing with them, you can't say anything. You, you've just got to get on with it um, and, and just pretend that, you know, they're not there in the room. And uh, it's difficult. Yeah, very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> She's hurt, she hurt my stepdad. She's smashed up like we've got one girl. She's smashed up and she's throwing hands everywhere. How old are you? Um, I'm 12 years old. The heartbreaking calls are when a young child, seven, eight years of age, knows how to ring 999 because mum and dad are fighting. I call the police emergency. Okay. How old are you? Nine. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what's happening. Where's your mum now? Where's your dad? What have they done to each other? It is horrible when you walk away and you've left those kids there. If, you know, the injuries don't want going up to hospital or they refuse to go to hospital. And you, you, you just know that it's going to happen again. I've had them where Dad's got a knife. Why has your dad got a knife? Why is a six-year-old child on the phone to me telling me Dad's got a knife and he's attacking Mum? That's wrong. Children shouldn't be witnessing things like that. Hello, Lancashire Police. How can I help? I need you here now. 
What's the problem? Right. Look what you're doing to this little one. What are you trying, you know? They're innocent. It's not their fault they've been sucked into all this madness. If you don't do it for anything else, do it for them and just get them out. Um, Because they deserve better. Police have been called to a fight between a couple. An 18-year-old man is accused of punching his girlfriend. You make me freeze time! Put the hands behind your back. Put the hands behind your back. Put the hand. Hold the hand. Keep your hands there. This time, the accused is taken to the station. Jed, what, what are you doing it for? You're on bail. You're on bail for hitting the girl already. No, mate, you are, I am going full fucking force with this. Wrong, have you got it? Are you not hitting me for no reason? Three more, you piece of shit. Number four. Oh, Mark's just picked me up. I've gone outside and he's hit me again, so I've come up here and he's hit me again. Do you want to give a statement then? Yeah. If we take a brief one off you tonight and then when you've sobered up in the morning, take a full one off you. Yeah. Yeah? Right. Are you injured at all as well? A big ump there, no. So what, so he punched you? Yeah, three times. Where, where did that happen? He punched me once in walkabout, then outside, then up there, but... Is this not the reason you split up last time as well? Yeah. yeah. OK. Take that and they can take a quick statement off you, all right? And then we'll, we'll get you home, all right, or whatever, all right? About three or four years ago, and he run after me and punched me in my head. Looking back now from the times he's hit me, it's still going to happen again, no matter what. Right, let's get it off now, I'll just say. Only one in four cases of domestic violence is ever reported. In nearly half of these cases, the victim withdraws their complaint. A female with this male's partner has said that she's been assaulted by him, he's punched her to the side of the head a few times. Jade is determined to press charges. If he can hit me, then I can sit and do a statement against him. So that's how I looked at it. He didn't feel sorry for me when he punched me, so why should I feel sorry for him when I'm doing a statement? No going back. First day was something special. <laughs> that I'll never forget, that's ingrained. <laughs> Brand new rookie on the station. <laughs> Absolutely terrified. The station <laughs> officer said, um, "Oh, and this is Mandy. Who you'll be, uh, who you'll be working with? This is your partner." Oh, Hi, my name's Paul. She said um, the fateful words that she came out with was, uh, <laughs> "Don't it's oh, yeah, my name's Mandy. Don't piss me off, and we'll get on." <laughs> and then just walked out. So I don't know whether she was having a bad day at the time. <laughs> But I'm left there in the garage going, oh, what have I done? What have I done? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> For Jade, pursuing charges paid off. Her boyfriend received a six-month suspended sentence for assault and a restraining order. No girl deserves to be it, no matter what they've done. It's never going to change, and I'm not, I'm not putting up with it. I'm making a start of my life. I'm just leaving behind. I don't know, 13 years. I've never worked with anybody for 13 years before in my life. Have you seen the new update on this, by the way? No. Test your brain waves now. <laughs> no, it does not. It does? Yes, it does. <laughs> Watch. Is it going to be a blank screen then? <laughs> Gosh, this is serious. 
<laughs> right, that's me thought in. <laughs> so I was just wondering. <laughs> officially asking. <laughs> it's got it, look. That's perfect, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I was wanting to know. I know I'm the happiest man in the world already, but officially. Will you marry me? I'll even go down on one knee. This is official. Will you legally make me the happiest man in the world? <laughs> oh. The ring might be jelly. <laughs> But the sentiments are real. But yes. No. Silly <laughs> bugger. <laughs> if you live your life where you're going to look back and say, I wish I would have, then you, you've missed the point of it. We do see a lot on our job, you, you, and it just stop you in your tracks. And I, and I guess you tend to grab life firmly with both hands. It's too short to be arguing with people. It's too short to be fighting with people. Because you only get one chance. Tackling some weighty issues to ensure a bouncing baby is delivered. A special one-born plus-size mums, next on four.